Yeah, hello, good evening. Good evening, my people. This is your boy, Pastor Santa Camo, and, and I'm with my man, my brother. How you doing? This is your co-host, Ricard G. Noel, and we're here today with a very, very special guest. A very, very special guest. Introduce yourself, brother. Good evening, everybody. Brother Jonathan Kwaku. Shout out, shout out, shout out. You see, we usually do a show on Monday, Definitely. but today we're here on a Tuesday because we got a very special episode with a very special guest. I told him, yo, I've been trying to get you on this show for months now. He said, yo, I can't do it Monday. I'm going to do it Tuesday. I said, you know what, just for you. And blessings to God because, you know, because we have our own studio, we're not paying per hour anymore, and we have unlimited access, we could do as much episode whenever we want. And any day that we want. So anybody I want to come on the show who haven't been on the show, if you guys know anybody that should be on the show and someone that you can recommend us to the show, please let us know. Again, this is the real word. Um, you could check us out on YouTube, youtube.com backslash C for channel backslash the real word TV. You catch all the first season episodes, all 25 episodes of the first season on there. Um, we also on GoFundMe. If you love the show, you want to donate to the show, go to www.gofundme backslash the real word. Right now, we're trying to obtain that 501c3 license to become a non for profit, try to get some grants, we're trying to get some sponsors, we're trying to take it to the next level because we're a ministry, but we also a movement, you know? We started last year, just July, you know? So it's not even been a year yet. And we only in February, so it's been a couple months, and you see how much progress we got, and that's because of you, the viewers, the supporters, and because of God. So shout out to everybody. What you think, Sanders? Man, I'm just honored, man. Um, you know, the Lord basically opened a, a door for me today, and I'm just glad to be working with this this king right here. He's a beautiful, beautiful person. I'm just excited to be working with you, my brother. And like I said, you know, we, we, we of course, we want to make money. That's the goal. We want to make money. Nothing wrong with making money. We want to take care of ourselves. You know, 100 sneakers, I want that. You feel me? Go to the other 100 guys. 100 sneakers, thing. bro. You only got two feet. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But it's just me. You know, I, I want to look nice. Get the gold chain. I want that. Get the nice watch. I want that. You know what I'm saying? Making, you know, make, buying a big medallion for, for your son who has a big head. I want to do that. You know what I'm saying? I want to do that. But at the same time, as we have it, we want to give back to the community. Yeah. They're showing you bad love right now. You know, exactly, you know what I'm saying? No, they're showing, they're showing us mad love, you know? Because like I said, you are a reflection of me, I'm a reflection of you. So at the end of the day, don't let my wife hear that. She might get jealous. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Stop, yo, listen, Opal, listen, when, when we get you a Benz, you're going to be all right. Because you call me Robin, so you know the time that we are. We, we, we got it here. We are you're official. So you don't have to worry about. But it's really an honor, you know what I'm saying, to meet brothers who are subject. Shout out to one of our, our sponsors in the back. Who stay with us too? Shout out to him. Who just believe in us? It's about us getting money together, yeah. doing what we need to do for our families, but helping the community. And once we have like, trust me, once we do that, thirty, a hundred people, three hundred people will come in. Like, listen, we have money, but we're coming together. We are gonna make something happen yeah. for our community. It's by example. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So I'm excited about that. Um, I, I'm just grateful. Because we are in the, uh, the mode of transition. Mm. So transition is coming. Blessings are coming. I'm just excited. I want to shout out um, my man Eric from Boston. He said the bonus episode. You know it's going tonight. Well, we bust your head today. Um, a <laughs> bonus episode. See, see, that's what I love about this show. We never, <laughs> we never know who's going to be on. What specials we're going to throw out. You just got to stay tuned and watch. That's a fact. That's a fact. Also, I want to shout out um, Judith. Oh, shout out to who's Judith. Who's watching. And my man, um, I bet your man, Chris Haywood. Shout out to you as well. Oh, shout you. out to Chris. Yeah, we support you. But um, I wanted to say thank you, man. I'm, I'm honored, Ricard. I'm honored. I'm excited. And, man, you know, you, you just feel like you, you, something big is going to happen. Something big is going to happen. So I'm just excited for a transition, and I'm hungry, and I'm glad for that. But I want to go to my man Jonathan, right? Yeah, enough about us. What about so you? So, John, man? tell the people who you are. What's going on, y'all? Uh, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just, just a servant, man. I'm just someone who just is passionate about life. Okay. Passionate about people. Okay. Ministry. Okay. Um, I'm an educator. Okay. I'm a high school teacher. Okay. Uh, I teach world history. Okay. At Wingate. Shout okay. Shout out to Wingate. Shout oh, out wow. uh, Brooklyn's finest. Okay. Um, you know, I just really love learning every day for my students, teaching them also, learning in life every day, going back home. I was 
married the end of 2016. Okay. Shout out, shout and out. I love learning every day in that. It's, it's a beautiful thing. Okay. And just ministry, um, helping out with local ministries and churches, federation, all this kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, and just working also, I've been working actively in the um, in the sports community, in the Haitian community, I work with two soccer teams. Mm. Oh, okay. So we work with a lot of guys coming over from the country, helping them transition here. Well, you do that. You do that. Yeah, yeah. So we just been doing it for since 2014. We're so working with this guy named Jackie Felix, who's really big in the community, and he's um, there's a lot of lot of good work. So it's good stuff. And you play a little ball too, right? Yeah. No, he, no, he nice. <laughs> he nice, bro. He nice, bro. He nice. <laughs> so let's. Zoom into all the things that you said and break it down a little yeah. bit. First thing you said that you a uh, global history teacher, right? Yeah. Yep. So that means you majored in history and things of that nature, right? Yeah. So you know a little bit about history. Yep. Yeah. We're just coming off of black history, which yeah. is our history. Yeah. And we're in March right now, and we're going to hit May soon. Facts. So Haitian independence. Yeah. And this is also Women's Month, right? Correct. So let's put that all together. Yeah. So yesterday we dove into... We spoke about women, the role of women in the community and everything else. You being an educator, how do you see, according to history, of how women were treated and how women behaved versus to how the young women behave now, especially since you're an educator and you're in school, you see the more modern-day yeah. females. How are they behaving? Mm -hmm. How do they conduct themselves compared to the women of history? So you say more so like in my classroom when I see the students or the young women of this generation in general? Based on your observation all in general, all together. Mm. Um, you know, I think it depends because they all have different personalities. Mm. So uh, this year I'm teaching mostly ninth grade with some 11th grade and um, you can see they're not afraid to question, number one. Mm. You can see they're not afraid to think critically and they don't let, I guess they don't really let society, mainstream society, define their roles for them. Mm -hmm. uh, but it also depends because in my school, I would say about 40% of the students are coming directly from the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. And so some of them are, are, are in between taking ideas that they have back home in their islands. And what they see now. And, and, and here in the U.S. and they're sort of trying to balance it out. Mm -hmm. Trying to so fit in. Yeah, they're trying to fit in. So for the most part though, it doesn't really, you know, I don't see women as seeing any hurdles in front of them. Mm -hmm. You know, I have students that will come from different islands and different places, and they have a lot of confidence. They're intelligent. You know, every year the students have to take these state exam called the Regents yeah, to graduate. Know. And these kids come in from the islands, a lot of them, and they excel really fast. And they see a lot, too. They see a lot of things, so they really excel really fast. Um, they pay attention to details. They ask a lot of questions. I think if you compare that to women back in the day, I think they always had the potential, but yeah. they didn't always have the opportunity. Yeah. You know, and it also depends on which culture. For example, right now we're learning about the Mongols. Mm -hmm. The Mongols were the largest empire in history, yeah. led by a guy named Genghis Khan. Shout out to and Genghis Khan. Yeah, he was he was a problem. I mean, he he was a little bit of like a vagabond too. He was yeah. a little bad. Yeah. He had a, little. He was terrible. he was a problem. They said one out of every two hundred people today in the world carry his, his DNA. Yeah, everywhere he went. Yeah, they, man. He they was, raped and pillaged. <laughs> yeah, he was, he was pretty much out of control. Yeah, they take what they want. But one thing they did was they respected their own Mongol women. When the Mongol soldiers were out abroad conquering lands, mm. they left the women in charge to run the village and everything. Wow. Yeah. So the women played a major role. So it's things that people don't know in history, but... That's kind of how it is right now. When a man's out at work, he leaves the woman to run the house. Yeah. They definitely, I mean, and it's, and you know, it's, it's interesting in America because wow. women work too. They yeah, work course, also yeah. a lot more than it's, back in the day. Mongolia still exists, right? It still exists, yeah. It's where the map is. North of China. North of China, south of Russia. You see right there? North yeah, it's big. North it's that China, big. Right there. Oh, okay, what about yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. They, they had an empire that went all over, um, all this part of Asia, all the way to, to the tip of Turkey. So, Kukosh, is, is there, right now, they're a democracy, right? I believe so. Don't quote me on it, but I believe they are a democracy. Okay. I believe they are. Although they're, they're, they're near China, which is not yeah. a democracy, and they were near the so former Soviet Union, okay. Russia. Okay. If some of you are still confused, there's a movie, an old Disney movie called Mulan. In the movie Mulan, they're going to war with the Mongols. The big guy who's tatted on his face, he's supposed to be Genghis Khan. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. I know that. I never saw that, believe it or not. Yeah. They yeah. took me to, to turn out and on a school trip, I think, in kindergarten or something, back in the days. 
Yeah. But back to what you were saying, right? Yeah. You were saying that your school mostly have a bunch of West Indian kids. I remember one gate is infamous for having a lot of Haitian people. Mm -hmm. So the Haitian culture, when they come to America, how do you think they fit into American culture now? Because back then, I remember, it used to almost be like a crime to be Haitian. Like, you would have to lie, because they were like, oh, you Haitian, you dirty, you ashy, yeah. you poor, mm -hmm. you got peasy hair, yeah. and they would come at you crazy. Like, even me, I grew up Haitian, and I didn't grow up with much. And to, to, so to grow up poor and to grow up Haitian, it was like, almost like a death sentence. <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> But now everybody want to be Haitian, you know, shout to Wyclef and all the other people that made me Haitian cool, and now to be Haitian is like a badge of honor. Yeah, like, oh, you're Haitian? Like, yeah, hey, I'm Haitian. Like, oh, don't mess with this guy. Yeah, 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 it's true. <laughs> yeah, so right now, like in school, like how do they treat the Haitians? I mean, they show the Haitians a lot of love, and you got two types of Haitians. You have what you call the Jasper Haitians is like like us who's born here, mm -hmm. who like, you don't know we Haitian un unless you hear our name, yeah. but we tell you, because we don't really necessarily have an accent per se. Yeah. And then you have the Haitians who, you know, just come from Haiti, and at least in my school, I can't speak for all schools, they get a lot of respect. I think just as new generation, I mean, they don't even know how it really feels to be picked on yeah. as, as Haitians in a sense. But uh, you know, my seniors are born in 2000. Mm. You know what I mean? My yeah, seniors, right. everyone's my seniors are 2000. Oh, so millennials. Yeah, all millennials. The oldest kids in my school are born 2000, and the youngest, the freshmen are now born 2003. So these kids, when they were born, things were already going uphill for Haitians. Okay, know? okay. I yeah. remember one time I had a good, we had a good family friend who was staying with us, visiting us with us. I was upstate, and I had like a Haitian t-shirt. And I think she went to high school in Brooklyn in the late 80s, early 90s. Mm -hmm. and she was like, yo, why are you rocking that Haitian shirt? I was like, because I'm Haitian, and she was just like, well, we couldn't do that back in the day. And she was saying how it was tough because the first Haitians that came here in large numbers, like in the 80s, 70s, 80s, they weren't born here yet. They were coming here from Haiti, so all of them had accents. Wow. The guys would have shirts, and shirts had to be tucked in the school. Yeah, the girl, yeah man, <laughs> the girls had to wear skirts. Yeah, they, and they also had their bonnets, too. Yeah, the I mean, they call me to. church boy because... I used to wear church clothes to school. <laughs> yeah, that's what it was. Now that that's too, you know, starting younger too, um, even in addition to, we also have like high waters. Yeah. You know, buying clothes from Payless. So, I mean, you know, you start with that, you know what I'm saying? In elementary school, it's yeah. part of that, you feel me? Yeah. Nobody have control over what you exactly. buy. Exactly, but after money. when you're in high school, you transition, yeah. you know what I'm saying? You you know, you yeah. like your mom, mm -hmm. we can't be buying at um <laughs> at flea markets. But listen, you know what's so crazy though? There's a lot of people they buy flea markets. I mean that's the spot to go if you were trying to save money and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they Bobby's, you know what a lot of them still go to Telco. I mean, you can get like good deals yeah. 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 I mean you, you you can still get good socks yeah. from Bobby's, yeah. good boxes, like twenty, thirty boxes. From Bobby's, nothing wrong with that. But back in the day, it was yeah. looked down upon. You feel me? But hard. now, you know, you try to save money. You know, yeah. and you get some nice stuff from like the yeah. flea market, yeah. nice yeah. vests and all that. You know what I'm saying? That's true. That's yeah. facts. The game definitely changed, but I think, I think it sort of changed for Haitians. I mean, whether you like him or not, you gotta give credit to Wyclef because when he came out with the Fujis in '95, '96, and then Proswell, his cousin was Haitian. Yeah. Norman Hill wasn't Haitian, but she, she was from there. Jersey. Yeah. She, you know, North Jersey. She went to um school called Columbia High, Maplewood, North Jersey, got a lot of Haitians, so she was so cool with them, but anyway, when he went out and he started to say that he was Haitian, that's when the whole game changed, like, yeah, yeah. for years, people used to say it was from Martinique, Guadeloupe, Canada, they used to say they're from any other country that like, speaks French. No, no, I'm not Haitian, I'm French. <laughs> yeah, they would change it up all the time. So I think Wyclef changed the game. No, Wyclef then, did change the game. Yeah, he changed the game, and God sort of was like, you know what, yep. if here's a guy who's mainstream, well known and he's respected and he's proud of being Haitian and I could probably be proud of being Haitian. You and know? now there's a lot of false claim Haitians in the rap game. Like Fetty Wap. Yeah. yeah it's so a fact. Yeah, there's a lot of guys. I, I think thought he was Haitian too, but he you know you know, you yeah, know he, but he bangs yeah. the Haitian by association. I think um things changed in Florida when Zopan came out. That's a fact. These guys you know, they made a lot of money, you know, and they would rob boats coming into the Miami River. Yeah, yeah. And they would so rob them for cocaine. Yeah, so for so many years, <laughs> nobody would snitch because who's going to snitch and say somebody stole, robbed me of, of, you know what I mean? About cocaine, of, yeah. Of cocaine, whatever. So these guys sort of put in a lot of work and sort of made it easier, I guess, for everybody else. But I think now it's become almost extreme. When now we got like a bad reputation sometimes of being violent now. Yeah. So it's like, I mean, we are violent. I, 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 we are violent if you mess with us. Yeah, I'll say if you I mean, I mean, I don't promote Zopal, yeah. 
I don't promote Zopan. Like, I mean, I remember the other day I was talking to um, my father's best friend. Mm-hmm. He said that Haitians are violent people mm-hmm. in regards to, like, you know, remember, like, you know, we come from, like, you know, um, the, the warrior tribe in, 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 in Africa. So those guys were warriors. You see what I'm saying? They couldn't stand that slavery stuff. You know what I'm saying? Don't, don't get it. Every, every, everywhere had slavery. That's slave rebellions. But we just took it to the next okay. level. You see what I'm saying? We, we, oh wow, that's cousin, uh, Uncle Jerry. Um, Haiti, Haitian Mafia over here. I was out here since the 70s. Ah, I hear you, big homie. I heard you. You know what I'm saying? So m- my thing is that going back to that is, um, you know, I don't, I don't, the reason why Zopan was created, mm-hmm. the Haitian Mafia was created was for the mere factor of protection, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. Because you know it was, but I'm not with the selling drugs and, yeah, and all that, you know what I'm saying? But I know what you mean exactly. Yeah, definitely. That's a fact. So as a Haitian man and an educated man, how do you feel about the President of the United States and his take on Haiti, and not only Haiti, but other black, majority black countries and his stance, yeah. and how does the younger generation feel about this president? Yeah. Um, I mean, I hate to say it, but I'll be, I'll be real. Like, there's a saying that says that expectations are the root of all disappointment. Mm. And this guy's already showed his colors, so I don't really have high expectations for him. It's sad that I have to, that I have to accept that. that yeah. I don't have high expectations. It, you know, get a president. I mean, I don't trust any government or politics, period. But when you're the leader Why? of the world's Why? most... Because at the end of the day, these guys are about themselves. I mean, it's like it's like they would say, it's a saying they would say, someone something like, for example, if you go to Haiti, when it's time to run for elections, everybody speaks Creole, the politicians. But when they get up there, they only speak French, almost in the sense that, like, mm. you use the people to get where you need to get. Of course. You know what I mean? So I think politics, some politicians are genuine, but I think it's a minority that are genuine. Um, but I think with the president, I mean, he's just, he's, just a, he's just ignorant. He's ignorant. He doesn't have a lot of knowledge. He doesn't understand. He's not thinking about what makes his companies run. You know. But he's sheltered, though. He grew up rich, right. and he's rich. Not, and he doesn't. Rich. And he doesn't integrate with those people. Not only that, so he also he also, he also took out um, Rex Tillerson too, mm. because Rex Tillerson was was on a, a Russian spy who just killed a British mm. intelligence, and I heard that because of that, yeah. um, he took out um, Rex Tillerson. Yeah. There's like this, this, this is kind of like a bromance mm. between him and Vladimir Putin. Mm. Which which is the case, yeah, it's a little but 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 Max uh, Maxine Waters says that um, if it's not Mueller's gonna take out Trump, it's gonna be Stormy Daniels. Cause we all know that we all know that Donald Trump had sex with Stormy Daniels. Now <laughs> let's keep it real. I mean, he can't be trusted. I mean, not just that's a fact. He, can't he got money, yeah. and there's a lot of white privilege. Yeah, definitely. And I think you never have to put he never have to put himself in the shoes of anybody that suffer. He never have to work for anything. He came from not. privilege. So and he doesn't even understand like you, he he's from New York, yeah, a city that's on paper like almost fifty percent immigrant, and if you add the children of immigrants, it's even more. So here's a guy that really doesn't understand that immigrants make this country go. You know, it's so funny. They were talking about farmers, right? A lot of these farmers voted pro GOP, and these farmers now are saying, actually, can you not deport everybody because? We can't get work done on our farm if, yeah. if we deport these guys. So they need migrant workers. Yeah, they do the work that no one, none of us, listen, you know a lot of these people, when, when the immigrants cleaning their hotel room and the immigrants, uh, immigrants cleaning their toilet bowl and the immigrants picking all these crops and their farms and, and getting thorns caught in their hands, no one has a problem with it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I think it's just... It's ignorance. Yes, yeah, ignorance, and I think it's a threat that, like, we're going to be overtaken by these people, but the reality is these people, if, if, if you get rid of them, now you got to find one of us to do that work. We're not doing that work. We're not going to do it for the price that they do it at. That we're not going to put in the same amount of effort. So when we put in, we do it, we're going to want an extra raise. We're going to want an extra lunch break. And we're not going to get as much work done as they do. And the price of food goes up. Literally, if, if you don't have these guys picking your crops and working hard the way they work hard, the price of everything goes up. Of course. We owe them big time. We owe our No, what well, we do, and the thing is that the nation, I mean, if you really want to be uh, correct, the the real Americans are, are Native Americans. Pretty much, yep. That's and it. they were slaughtered. They were slaughtered. I read an article the other day. Um, it said that during the California Gold Rush, the population of Na- of Native Americans in Calif- in the state of California came from 150 thousand all the way down to less than 50 thousand. Almost yeah. over a hundred thousand Native Americans were were killed, and the state of California gave the people over a million dollars to hunt. Yeah. The Native Americans. Yeah. 
Yeah, man. They, they could. They, I mean, they thought like they, they called it manifest destiny. They thought it was actually their destiny to move from the Atlantic Ocean to the Pacific Ocean. Yeah, literally. And that's what they. I mean, they put some. That's why they, they called it the Trail of Tears. So many Native Americans died, and now Native Americans live on reservations. My God. At the Wall Berlin, they have the highest. Uh, alcoholism rates, the highest it's depression and suicide rates in America, of course. they actually been forgotten. You know, it's yeah. funny as blacks, we get mistreated, but we make some noise. You know what I mean? If you come yeah. first, we'll make some noise. Yeah, yeah. Nobody really make a noise for the Native Americans. Nobody hears their voice. Their cry is like a silent cry. Even today, with the Alaska pipeline, the pipeline that they were trying to stop, there's Native Americans who was getting killed today yeah. for, over that pipeline. Wow. And they're being shot and they're being slaughtered and no one talks about yeah, it. They don't no talk one about talks it. about it. They don't talk about no it. No one talks about That's it. Sad. A lot of things people don't talk about. Mm -hmm. Um, back to what you were saying about the crops. The other day I, I seen an article about sharecropping and it said up until even up until nineteen eighty two and mind you I was born in eighty eight. So up until eighty two there were people who were quote unquote sharecroppers but actually in reality slaves mm -hmm. in the state of Mississippi yeah. and Louisiana. And these people were were on these plantations and working, but they weren't getting paid. But their payment was to live on the land that they were working on. So yeah. basically, they were slaves, and they were descendants of past slaves who were sold. And a genealogist came in, and they did a background check, and they saw that these people that were still on those plantations were great great grandchildren of the former slaves that were sold, and yeah. they had the receipts of when they bought the slaves. And it was like, how are these people still slaves? And they showed it. One was because they were fair. Mm -hmm. They that they were too scared to stand up and another thing was they had no place to run if you went up the south basically you're in the middle of nowhere you have no place to run yeah, and I feel like it's the same thing with hair and with everything else it's either you're you're scared or you have no place to go I, I have to um want to say something yeah I'm, I'm gonna just change I'm um, topic real quick so basically I feel like the man that you are you know, yeah. you, know you and I gotta we gotta put you yeah, yeah, yeah. on blast yeah. finally <laughs> that, um, that's why he put you in the middle. <laughs> I, just, I just feel like, in all honesty, I'm gonna just say this, yeah. right? I feel like, cause you know, you 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 you're a low a low on the radar type of guy. Yeah, try to be. You try to be. Yeah. Why you say that for? Before I make my statement, why you say that for? I, just, I don't feel it's important to bring unnecessary attention to yourself. You know. Okay. I don't feel. I think it's attention is overrated a lot of times. No, I agree. I agree, but I, but but I mean, but but you you do you believe that when somebody does good, that they will be celebrated, they will be acknowledged. That yeah, you, 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 that's you believe a, that's that. A, that's a good thing. Yeah. You, good you believe thing. that. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of times people don't really value people when they're alive. That's true. But you know what I'm saying? But when they die, that's when they want to want to go hard. Like that's Craig true. Mack. Yeah, Craig Mack just died. Yeah. You feel me? Like Craig Mack was very instrumental in the life of that. But but since they were called? No, I was gonna say funerals don't count. That's a, that's a fact. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so Craig Mack was very instrumental. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. When we Biggie, because mm -hmm. he's the first bad boy and stuff like yeah, that. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But he decided to go to that spiritual side and everything like yeah. that. But his music is official. Yeah. You feel me? So but going back to you though, yeah. I mean, so my thing is that you've done a lot of things. Yeah. So can you share to the people like three things that you've done instrumental? So, or what would you say on, on what level would you say? On what level? Okay, when it comes. In what to, area? Okay, when it comes to like ministry. Ministry. Um. Wow. Ministry is. Ministry gives you purpose. Ministry okay. brings joy to your life. It brings. Okay. It gives life way more purpose. It gives you something to look forward to. Okay. You know, every day counts when you think about ministry. Okay. Um. I mean, I think I've been doing it for a while. You know, I grew up in. What, what's a while? It's been, how long have you been doing ministry? You know, for? I really in a serious level. Since like 2002, you would say in series in 2002. So How many years is that? That's about uh, 16 years. 16 right? years. Wow. Yeah, about 16 years. Okay. So I started in my home church upstate, in Hudson SEA Church, in Poughkeepsie, New York. You know, we grew up there. We were very isolated. My home church was very isolated. Um, like you guys grew up down here. Yeah. Like you go up at Ola, but you know everybody from everywhere. You yeah. know, you go walk to Hebron, walk to this church, That's whatever. Right. In Hudson, it was just us. You know what I mean? And because of that, we had a very uh, strong sense of community, yeah. right? That was like our community center. So we lived at the church. Friday night, she was there. We had programs. Saturday, all day. We uh, Sunday, all day. And Saturday, when I was... Saturday afternoon, we saw the baptismal class. And I remember the church was looking to baptize some young people. And they had... Um, they were looking for someone to teach a baptismal class. This was like 2001 at first. Mm. I just started high school, and I remember... Um, I sort of was like, I didn't know what was going on, but I was going through a lot, 
And they were like, you know, do you want to do this baptismal class? Like, teach kids about the Bible. Mm. And I was like, you know what, man? I guess I'll go for it, you know? And I just, it forced me to really study my Bible for the first time. Yep. It forced me to really get into a lot of topics and questions that I didn't even know I had. And I think one of the best ways to keep them in the church is to use them. You got to be used. You got to be of use. If you're a spectator, you're not going to last. So I think that's what helped keep me in the church at a young age. And the guys in the class were my age, and I was teaching them. They were my age, and a little younger than me. Yeah. And that was really when I first started to get into ministry. And that was all through high school. And that was a, a really, I think it had a good impact on my own church. And it helped us develop and get close. And when I graduated high school and went to college, I went to Philadelphia. And um, and, and, you was, and you was doing your thing over there too. Yeah, we started a ministry on campus. It was a, another young lady, um, a group called Basic. Yeah. Uh, they had a Bible study on campus. And Ani, it's funny, Ani went there because at the time during, um, we had a uh, orientation. And then an orientation, there was this girl that my friends and I, we all liked at the time. Mm. And she was like, yo. But you know what's so crazy? When you was there, there was a lot of girls that liked you. Man, let's be honest, but that just listen. Look, look, all right, look, all right, let, 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 let's keep it real, bro. All right, let's be real. Shout out to Miriam, great wife. But before Miriam, listen to this, bro. I remember when I came and you invited me to come speak at your ministry, um, at your ministry, Philly, remember? Yeah, 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 at, yeah, at the church, right? Yeah. Bro, there was like this side of exaggeration, Facebook. Look at me, you know I'm not nah, lying, bro. Nah, man, it, the facts is the on, facts, man. bro. Bro, let's, let's just keep it real, bro. There was 30 girls, bro. Was like, was like oh, who's Jonathan talking to? If any, bro, that was bro, bro. I'm not lying, bro. Let's keep it real, bro. Bro, you know, you know, you came, bro. We're the same time, bro. Like, thirty, yo, thirty, and bro, not listen to this. Nice toes, all that, bro. Official, bro. Was like, listen, good looking girl. But like, listen, if anybody wanna highlight, oh, somebody about to make up, made a remark. Oh, she, oh, she, see, Alexandria even agreed too. That's a fact. Nah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> there was like 30, I said, bro, let me tell you about There was, there was 30 girls like, yo, listen, if anybody got to get with Jonathan, they got to, they got to get to me. I'm like, yo, Jonathan. You know what? They were like sisters. That's why they were very they were, defensive. Yeah, yeah they, were, they, were, they, were, they were defensive, but they were all, but they were all bad. There was no ugly ones. There was, there was, there, 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 there was no fufu, bro. There was no fufu to it, bro. But the thing is, they were the beautiful sisters. And the thing is that, I feel like the way you carried yourself is is a lot of people respected you at that because you was the temple. Yeah, it was that temple. And you was and you was well you. it was well respected, well admired by a lot of a lot of people yeah. at that school. You know what I'm saying? Why, why do you think is that? You know what? It really just got to be the crisis. There's nothing good. I think in yourself, by oh, nature, we're okay, selfish. That's right. Okay, we're selfish. I think we're selfish, and everybody wants to get their own. Yeah. And I think. Um, I think the biggest thing is really like you just gotta be genuine. I don't think people I don't think people are looking for anybody that's perfect to be honest. That's a fact. You gotta they be know, they know when they look in the mirror, they're not perfect. Mm -hmm. I think the biggest thing is you gotta be real. I think real recognize real. That's and a fact. If you if you don't put people down, you don't really hate on people, you don't talk bad about you don't come for people behind their back and you just show love, mm -hmm. I think people will appreciate you. You don't have to be the smartest, you don't gotta be the most handsome, you don't have to be the most attractive, whatever. I think when you're genuine people have a decent antenna for for if you're for genuine people. You know what I mean? That's a fact. And I think that's the biggest thing. Like, yeah, that's I, think a that's, fact. I think that's what people appreciate. That's fact. People that's genuine. If you go to any neighborhood, any place, yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's it, man. Yeah. You know, I think that's very important. You know, mm. so you know, I just think ministry, listening, you know what's funny, when I was at Temple, we were a lot of us were away from home. Mm. A lot of my friends there. You don't live, you know, we, well, some, a lot of them had apartments on campus. Yeah. You know, we didn't have meal plans. There was no mommy, daddy there to do anything for you. But, but, but you looked up for each other, though. That's what it was. It was like, yo, you need a ride, I got you. I could give you a ride, but I got gas money. They give you gas money. You didn't, you, you didn't eat nothing, I got food for you. It was really like, yeah. the people I went to Temple with were so, in college, there's no, you can't be a bandwagon like that. That's you know a fact. I mean? There's no money. No one of us were rich. Mm -hmm. None of us had a million dollars. All we had was each other. Each other. You know what I mean? Thank and God. I think that's what made us so, um, I think that's what made we were so low. And I think, not just me, I think the people I was around were genuine. But, 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 but shoot up. Let's, let's do with you too. I think, I think you was very loyal. Now, I, I think in all honesty, bro, I'm going to keep it bu buck with you. I think in all honesty, like, you could be humble. Me, I believe humility is key. Yeah. 
but, but who does it like to be talked good about? I like when people talk good about me. There's nothing wrong with that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But you don't take it to the head. There's nothing wrong with that. You feel me? But you put a lot of work. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you can't take it to the head because you could drop in one second. You could lose everything yeah, in one moment. Like, in one moment, you lose everything. So it's just like, I, nobody can really brag because you on top today, you on the bottom tomorrow. Exactly. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, my dad always told me a story. He said when he first came from Haiti, he really had nowhere to go. His uncle, not his cousin, he had a cousin living in East New York that picked him up. Okay. And his cousin said, yo, man, you can stay with me. My dad was so grateful, like, yo, I'm so glad you took me in. I'm in a new country, et cetera, right. et cetera. But my dad's cousin was like, listen, man, life is funny. Today, I, you might need me, but tomorrow I might need you. A few years later, he had some issues, and he ended up moving in with us. You know what I mean? Ain't so that like, something? You know I, mean? so it's I like a story like that. Yeah, like... You That's know, a beautiful you story. You never know when you're going to need somebody's help. That's a fact. So you can't brag and talk. And Nobody's broke at all. That's yeah. a fact, bro. Mm -hmm. I want to say people that run their mouth, like you run your mouth, like you don't know what can happen. You have no control. I love a story like that. You know what I mean? A story of an underdog. Yeah, my dad always told me that story, and I was like, you know, he said that's why you never know. You never know when you'll need help. You know what I mean? You never know. The person that you help today can help you tomorrow. And the craziest part is... You don't even don't even help them because you need something in return. That's a fact. Something to help them. You know what I mean? But God will take care of you when you always looking out for people anyway. So I think that's important. That's why you can't. You gotta stay level headed because life will beat you up exactly. if you don't. Stay so so okay, okay. So so just tell me three things you have accomplished in ministry. Um. Wow. Just just give me three things because you've been around the corners. With it. What are three things? Um. Definitely Temple was a good time because okay. we had a lot of students in your way from home. We were yeah. on campus. And on campus, you got every type of temptation out there. Okay. You know what I mean? Every type of temptation. So I think when other students at Temple knew that um, that there was a safe place to go yeah. and that they could get encouragement from the Word of God okay. and prayer, I think that was big because it had a big impact on campus. And at the time, North Philly Church okay. really started to see the campus students really taking act, being active in ministry. So they came... And they really opened their doors to us at the time. Okay. It was Pastor Keith Goodman. Okay. And we developed a good relationship with them, and they did a really good job. So I said Temple was definitely a okay. great time. Name two more accomplishments that you had. Um, I had to say my home church growing up upstate. That was a big thing. Because you, you guys were big on outreach, that, right? That was big, yeah. And just that was the beginning of ministry. That was the beginning of service. That was the beginning of restarting this thing. It wasn't the thing is there was no social media back then. There was none of that stuff. So, but but your, it was going on. We but were, but your name was heard during that time. Well, it wasn't really heard. It was just in that area. But that was an important ministry because that was a foundation mm -hmm. for all the other ministries. You know, it's like no, but, but but in all honesty, like let, let's be let's be for real. This is yeah. another moment. It's another uh -huh. Jonathan Kwaku moment. The thing is that before I met you, I heard about you. You know that, right? Oh yeah, we was doing outreach. I was doing a lot of outreach and stuff like that. Yeah, the outreach was definitely. And it was and it was major because a lot of people were blessed by that. Yeah, we was doing subway series at that time. Okay. Um, we did subway series and pretty much at the time we were just going to the train stations and just minister to people and people were receptive. You know, people were very receptive. That was definitely big. Um, and I like what we're doing now. Um, with the federation, I like what we're doing now. Um, just working with our community and reaching out to the youth and trying to do provide programs for them. You can't force anybody to do anything, but at least they know that there's something out there for them. All you right. know what I mean? They Shout out to the Queens them. Rally Day this Saturday. Oh, yeah, yeah. We see you this weekend. Friday at Kelly, Saturday, Emmanuel, Long Island. Or oh, is this Friday? Oh, uh, yeah, Friday and Saturday. Friday oh, Saturday. Cinema, cinema. So yeah. let me ask you a quick question. With the Federation, why do you feel it, it's been successful? Because I know you guys are, like, I know Ricard and yourself, Daniel, Gasmir, Jessica, and and all of those. Why feel like it's it's so successful, so vibrant, it's so vibrant right now? I think we, but for both of you guys. I think we have to go backwards. Mm -hmm. I think you know sometimes we tend to put the the cart before the horse. We gotta be the horse in the front. What happens is a lot of times in ministry people make assumptions. Oh, we're doing this. People need to come. We're doing this. People need to support. Really, people don't owe you anything. Of course not. They don't owe you nothing. If you think they owe you something, you, you, you're mistaken. I think the biggest thing for us has been reaching out. So behind the scenes, we're constantly in communication with our churches. Every church. We have 32 churches now. And with those 32 churches, one of us is always communicating. Or we're checking on the youth directors. Checking on the youth. What do you guys need? Do you guys need help? And supporting them. You so, When you support your churches... And you encourage them. You know, youth being a youth leader is hard. You know, like if you a department, if you had another department, you might have one program a year. 
when you a youth director, they want you to have a youth program every, every month. single month. Oh. And you gotta find a speaker, and you gotta find this, and you gotta do an AY. You got, and it's like you don't, you gotta use money out of your own pocket. And exactly. Youth leaders, and you gotta regular nine to five. You know what I mean? Exactly. So it's just like people Nine-to-five don't support you, and then when you do a program. People criticize and of course. man, it's not. But but it's just so be a lady at my church. She used to criticize us about not having salad. Yeah, like, not knowing that I used to pay at one point. I used to pay for the whole meal every youth day crazy. out of pocket. Yeah, it's always because, someone to criticize. So you gotta just you have to just support those youth directors and develop a relationship with your young people, the youth. Of course, that's been the biggest thing. People so, don't care always about the programs, but they remember how you treated them and how you dealt with them. Exactly, and I think that's what's really. Helping young people come out. I think I think I, I think I think you guys are doing phenomenal with the programs. I feel like the programs are up to par. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like a lot of you guys are very selfless, very selfless individuals. And to be honest with you, I'm not trying to take no shots. It's not personal, but it's business. The thing is that I was talking to a sister of mine from Greater, and she was like, "They need to step their game up." You follow me? They need to step their game up. I think I, I know for a fact it's all about servanthood. Yeah. So. You know, I feel like you guys have the mindset of, of serving, and you guys use other people from different churches, yeah. not just one church. Definitely. And I'm not trying to take shots. It's not personal, but it's business. So at the end of the day, I, I support what you guys are doing. You guys are doing phenomenal. Not definitely. I, you know? I think even with Greater, I think um, they have the talent. They have the talent. They have the potential. But it's hard because they also are not allowed to create a, a federation in their conference. Mm-hmm. So I think that sort of serves as a, as a, as a hurdle. In a way, it's sort of just like you can't really, you know, create your own. But they're still doing what they have to do. But the potential but, is but, there. But they could, but they, they could be doing more. I mean, I think we could all honestly. We all could we, do we, more. Definitely. I, but 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 I feel like for year one of what you guys have done, I think it has been successful in regards to what you guys have done. You know what I'm saying? You about God's grace. You go ahead, Ricard. I'm sorry if I could interrupt. No, you go, fam. Um, in regards to the federation, like. I'm honored to be a, a part of the Federation. I remember how it all happened. Like, I got a call from Nadia, and she told me that I was elected. And I was like, elected by who? Like, I didn't know about no election. I didn't know about votes. I didn't even think anyone knew who I was or paying attention to what I was doing. But like I always say, I think the pastor that we had at that time, um, Pastor um, Wilfred jean um, at the time, like, he was going through his health issues, and he had a couple strokes so he couldn't really do much and the church was literally falling apart like we had holes in the ground we had the benches broken no one was coming to church and I was like yo somebody has to do something about it he said why don't you do it you and the young people I said okay cool so most of the young people we grew up together we knew each other for 15 20 years so I said yo we got to come together we got to do this you know same way I I used to it's like my mother always said she was like you have a lot of leadership potential within you but you usually use it for the negative things. If you was to put it towards something positive, you could achieve a lot. That's a fact. And you know, so that's what I did. So I took them together. You know, we all had different skills. You know, we had one kid, he was a carpenter. My brother was good at music. Another mm-hmm. kid, he was good at promoting, making flyers. Another kid, he was good at like, he was a ladies man, so he could attract the ladies. You know, everybody had their own thing. So we, we redid the floors ourselves. It took us weeks and hours of slaving in that church. like. Like, like we bled for that church, literally sweat, blood, tears, and we got the floors done. We Amazing. took the benches, put them back together. We painted them. You guys seen the church? It looks way different now. No, it does. It does. It looked before. So like, then we started to use the camera. You know, the power of social media. Yeah, and like, I would preach, but I would speak from the heart. You know, I kept it real. I wasn't an experienced preacher. I had no, no like background in preaching. I didn't go to Oakwood or Andrews. I didn't have. No coaching or nothing. I just yeah. spoke from the heart. About the heart, man. and I applied and I applied the stories that I've been hearing since a kid to my real life. Yeah. You know, the same principles, the same stories, and people felt it through the yeah. testimony. And since it was behind the camera, and I shared it with the world, I wasn't shy about it. People listened, you know. And then I used to see the church filled, and I'm like, this doesn't make sense to me. Mm-hmm. But God was ordering my steps, and I kept praying, Lord, please order my steps. Please order my steps. And like you said. I asked God to humble me, you know, because at one time it was getting to my head. I was like, yeah, you see, I brought the church back, blah, blah, I did this, I did this, this. And in the middle of all that, like a lot of people don't notice, I ended up in jail because I did, I reacted out of anger. Because I reacted out of anger, I got the police called on me in a personal situation. I ended up in jail. I was facing felony charges in the midst of all of this. 
you know? Like, right. I end up beating the charges, and the charges end up getting dropped. But while I was sitting in that cell for the 24 hours, it humbled me. And as I sat in the cell by myself, no right. mother, no father, nobody, yeah. like, I dropped to my knees in the middle of the cell. The police were laughing at me. Right. They laughed at me, like, what are you doing? And I could smell the smell of rotten flesh in that cell. And I was on my knees, humble. Like, life humbled me, you know? And I prayed, and I thanked God, you know? And after that whole situation went about, like, a couple weeks later, like, I ended up having the meeting with the mayor, like, the one that everybody was so hyped about and everybody was trying to be my friend. I'm like, you don't know what got me to this point. You understand? You don't know about the struggles that we went through. But even then, like, even now, up until today, you know, like, still working through the church, eventually, like, I became youth leader, then I got ordained as a deacon, and then they nominated me as elder and even as a s assistant chaplain like all those things they opened my eyes and God humbled me and it's a real life living testimony that other people could see like okay like this guy is genuine I could see it and I think that's what that's what moving the real word you know that's why I call it the real word because I could only keep it real any other thing if it's a, if it's a lie it would have felt a long time ago you know but because we kept it real I think I thank you for that. And I thank the Federation because, you know, I got exposed to different preachers, more people, you know, yeah, a lot of young sure. people, people from different backgrounds. When yeah. we go to these things, like three, four years ago, I wasn't going to these programs. Yeah. I didn't know about these programs. Yeah. I didn't know nothing about these things. No one ever reached out to my church because we were so small and they used to play us. They used to talk bad about us. They didn't yeah, care yeah. about us. Mad. Yeah, but now, like, stuff is different, you know? Yeah. So. It is all one big family, all working together. It's like different storefronts, but under one management, right. under one manager, which is God, and we all working together. And because we all working together in unisex, and everybody is denying themselves, there's no ego. But, we're able to work together. But let me tell you something. I've, I've noticed that all all hard work pays off. Definitely, sure. All hard work pays off. The thing is that the doubters, the doubters, those one who critique, they will never contribute to anything. Especially with the federation of what we're doing, all all hard work pays off because, like you talked about, how you paid for the food all the time, but the person who complained about vegetables, she never put a dollar for vegetables. You follow me? The reason why I had to pay for food out of my pocket is because my church was dying. The only thing we had was the youth day, and at that time, it was only you seven or eight youth in the church. Yeah. There were times I had to make that sacrifice. And I was like, okay, I could pay tithes and offerings, but I could really offer something to the church, you know? So I used to pay for decorations, I used to pay for food, I used to pay for flyers, I used to pay for these things in order to keep the church alive because we did not have enough tithes and offerings coming in for us to even afford to, to give people food. And that's going to pay off, bro. Now we do because we merged with the other church and now more people come so we're able to afford it. Now, we bro. Have, now the church has a budget for food every week now. You see how God works? But at that time, we needed something to sustain it. And because God blessed me, I was able to bless others. Bro, you, those, listen, all of those things are going to pay off. All of those things that have been done, all good deeds, will pay off. Because now, any event that Jordan River has, it's packed out. The Lord has blessed, you feel me? Same thing with the Federation, too. Like, all hard work pays off. People don't see the hard work that you put in. Like, for example, like a guy like Daniel. Like, Daniel... Shout out, shout out. Daniel... It's amazing. I know Daniel was slept on. I, I've never met the people that slept on Daniel, but I knew Daniel was is great. I knew that Daniel was great. I knew that Daniel was great. And it just shows you that he put himself aside. You guys like yourself, like Ricard, like Gasmere, like Jessica. And if I felt if I, if I felt to mention anybody's name, please forgive me. But those who were down with him, and as a result. The Federation is what it is. It's not clicky. It's a, let's everybody come together. Let's everybody support I, I, each other. I think, too, to add on what you guys are saying, on what both of you are saying, yeah. the hard work I, does pay you off, but I think we even got to be honest in the sense that God has to put you in ministry to save your life, too. That's a fact. Honestly, if you want to be honest, like these things, when you are when you have to go in front of people, um, whether it's on a small scale loss or you got to share something with them, you got to show Christ... You have to, you have to have something to give to them. Mm. You, you can't go to them empty-handed. I don't mean materially empty-handed, but spiritually, you gotta have something to give to them, something emotional to encourage them. And so, all this ministry, the ministry you've been doing, the ministry you've been doing, the ministry I've been involved in, 
at the same time, as much as a blessing to other people, this thing saves our life too. That's a fact. Because like, let's say, let's say, I could have caught up. We could have been killing. Yeah, it's the same could have been jugging. All that. They saved my life. Yeah. And my life too. Yeah. Trust yeah. me, I'm in that time and truth. Trust yeah, me, bro. Trust you, bro. me, bro. It really does. Trust I me. think sometimes it's two ways. You give, right? And God will make the rest go. Exactly. You got to be honest with yourself and say, man, Lord, if you didn't give me spiritual responsibility, I might have been spiritually irresponsible. To, you know be, I mean? to keep it a hundred with you guys, and this is the first time I said it on air. Before I dove all the way into ministry, shout out to my boy Freedance, because my boy Freedance, he he was one of the few people that kept it real with me. He was like, he was like, Rick, if you're gonna if you're gonna preach, you gotta put yourself out there. You gotta put yourself out there all the way. You gotta be all the way clean, because one mistake they'll crucify you in front of everybody. And I was like, what you mean? He said you can't be halfway in, halfway out, even though you're doing certain things. And you think no one is watching? God is watching. So. If you're going to put yourself out there and you're going to be one of those people that's going to be the face of that, you got to be all the way clean. And that hit me. I was like, damn. I was like, you're right. So I went and I prayed. I told God, God, if I submit totally to you and I leave the streets all the way alone and I do everything for you, help me to provide. So all of this that you see right now, all this stuff that people hate me for having, all this stuff that people hate me for accomplishing, God gave me all of this. Because... Four, five, six, seven, eight years, nine, ten years ago, I would have never thought I would be in this position. I would have never thought I would be able to live like this. And all of you in this room could testify to that. Because some, some of you know me from four, five, two, three, four, ten years ago. And I wasn't thinking about this. I, I would have never imagined. But God, but God provides. And I can't complain. I can't. I was like, one thing to definitely, like I said, giving God all glory for like again for choosing you right he chose us and i think also god for the environment that he put us in because me i've been in i've been back in new york for six years now mm. um, we are close until like 840 yeah we are close 840 right yeah 840 okay yeah, so i've been in new york for about six years now yeah. i was in boston i really actually enjoyed my ministry in boston too i forgot to mention that yeah and you put it and you put in work for that too yeah i mean it was good it was a good time but time. you put in work for that too yeah man it, okay. it was it was yeah, yeah it was, but it was it, it was it was a good experience. <laughs> now, it was a good experience, but it was great because I worked at a school called Epiphany School. And, you know, it was like a community school, you know, and they gave us access to all the facilities. And I remember, like, there was guys at, at Temple Salem at the time, and they had two services. And in the first service, a lot of the um, people in the Sabbath school were sort of like, it was like a neglected. There was this girl, I don't know what her name, I forgot, I haven't seen her in years. And she was sort of putting in work behind the scenes. And I'm like, man, these guys, a lot of young guys were in the class, and the, we had access to a gym. Mm. And I told the guy, I said, man, guys, just come to Sabbath school, let's talk, we want to hear you guys out. And we'll open the gym for you every Saturday night. And guys would come through, I mean, and I'm just looking at that was an important experience, too. That helped me understand, like, there's a, there's a way you can connect with people. Meet you know their what needs. Mean? Meet so their we, needs. Meet them where they are. You know what I'm saying? And it really, the young guys were all connected. But I think when I came back to New York, um... New York is an aggressive city. Of course. You understand? New York is a doggy dog world. It's in everything. Like, <laughs> New York, you walk down the street, it's no like, good morning, how are you? Like, you just say good morning. But it depends. You if you have a bit like me, they say what up to you, though. Know? <laughs> yeah. I don't know why is that. Have you been getting that, bro? <laughs> <laughs> I have to ask you that. Listen, I'm going to be honest with you, though. Know? I said, but have you been getting that, bro? Like, they just stop you? Like, I don't know. I think maybe it's a muzzle because every time I'm walking, there's always like a head nod. Yeah, it, 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 do, do you get that all the time? Like you get from respect. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Maybe because it's a muzzle thing, but after that, I saw I'm not. I'm trimming, but I'm not cutting. You heard? <laughs> but real talk, bro. I'm gonna I'm be, bro. No, I'm dead serious, bro. Any also turn out a lot of people too yeah. could be affected. But they're strangers, yeah. bro. Women or or or, 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 or women child relationships. <laughs> He's said women twice. Wo yeah, women. Yeah, because I love women. Yeah, <laughs> praise the Lord for that. <laughs> women, men, bro, kids. Little gangster kids, you because your boy. The other day, bro, I, they, 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 bro, the other day I was walking right, and these kids. I think I told you this. These kids got kicked out, and I was walking by your school, and I and I think because you know they think I'm Muslim, which is a this is a perfect way to do ministry. They think because you know they think I'm Muslim. I get everything but Haitian. You heard? So the thing is that I'm like, yo, I'm like, cause you know, if I went, if my thing was cut off, I couldn't tell them that. I was like, yo, guys. Yo, how y'all how y'all got kicked out y'all school for? Y'all ain't peasants. Y'all kings. You feel me? Like you know the system is already against you anyway, right? So what you get to like, yo, yo, king, you right, king. 
it, 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 it was but because of his beard, it's part of that too. Is but it's because, a, because of the beard, or it's because the spirituality. It's the a spirituality too. Yeah, it could be the whole presence. It's a whole presence too. It's a whole presence. We have an aura about ourselves, of but course. it's the beard too. The beard is. And that's the thing too. Just keep it about talking about dog eat dog. I just have to say yeah, that part. Yeah, that's a fact. Uh, no, nah, definitely, nah, definitely a dog eat dog world. And I think it translates into our our church culture at times. That's a fact. Like you have a lot of um, New York's are what you call it. I would say New York is a strong lay worker city. Mm-hmm. And you go to other cities like let's say you go into a program, there is really a pastor or certain people doing certain works. In New York, your average Joe said in your church are putting a lot of work too. That's a fact. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got a better nine to five. You got your own thing you're doing. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I'm my own thing. I'm doing my own thing. And it's just like, you find a lot of guys, is they, they're not a slave to their job. I mean, you do your job to pay your bills, but New York is also like, it's aggressive in ministry too. Like, I feel like, not everybody. Not it's everybody, to be honest. Awesome. But I think like, it, it translates. And I think we're a, a solid lay city. I mean, I think it's easy to find things to complain about. At the same time, it's a lay city where a lot of your average Joes, they put in a lot of work too. So it's, it's I think the culture pushes for things to happen and people want to see things happen. Right. New, York, New Yorkers don't like to sit back and watch, no. Hmm. So what's your closing thought? Um, let's start with Mr. Sanders. Man, I'm just honored to have Jonathan in, in the building tonight. Shout out to Mr. Kwaku for coming um, through. We appreciate I, your presence. Real word. I want to salute Jonathan for all the work he's been doing. He doesn't like, he doesn't like to be acknowledged. Because he's a modest man, am I right? Like yeah, whatever, <laughs> it's like that. But we want to God for everything that he's been doing for the community. Um, I didn't know you was with the soccer team. Yeah, yeah. You sit on yourself to that. I didn't know that. So there's a lot of things that you know. Like I said, you know, this is just a reminder to let you. We, I appreciate everything that you've been doing for the community. I appreciate everything that you've been doing for all the churches. I've been. I appreciate everything that you've been doing for the federation. I appreciate everything that you've been doing for your family yeah. and for everybody who's across you. You are truly a beacon of hope for the community. And I want to let you know that I appreciate you. And because of you, I'm doing what I gotta do. I so I want to, I want to, want to thank God. I want to thank God for you. You, Amen. you are solidified. You're a big homie for sure. <laughs> Brooklyn is your place <laughs> because I said so. You heard? <laughs> because I said so. Salute, yeah, so, I, so, 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 <laughs> so. But you, but you know Brooklyn though. <laughs> That's a fact. I had to close it. Salute to you, bro. Um, well, yeah. thank you guys, you know, for the invitation. I love what you guys are doing. So when I came here and just came here for, I mean, a lot of you guys haven't been here, but let's just see what they've done in the studio and hear you guys' story. You guys are fighters, point blank. And you guys, I mean, what you guys are doing is just, what you're doing, the consistency. Um, this is not easy stuff, you know what I mean? And I just appreciate the work you guys are doing. You know, you guys are out here and you're meeting people through a medium that often gets overlooked. Of course. You know, and you got to take advantage of it full scale. So I saw some Appreciate you guys. So love to you guys. Um, thank you. Thank you. And you know, closing thought, I just, just come in here and sit down here and talking and just seeing what you guys are doing and the moves you guys have made to come in the studio out here doing all these things. I say keep pushing, man. Keep working. It, it's something that when you leave now, you feel like there's no excuse. Sometimes you can be lazy, get down, like, nah, man, after seeing all this, nope, keep pushing, non Stop. Stop. So you guys are inspired, actually, to be honest with you guys. I'm inspired. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, To close out, I thank my brother Jonathan Kwaku for coming through today. We appreciate your presence, for blessing our show. Thank you to my co-host, Sandra Komofo, for being here. Thank you to all of the supporters, all the viewers. Um, We ask you, if you you like the show, it won't help to donate. www.gofundme backslash the real word. That's the real word. Um, Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, www.youtube backslash c for channel backslash the real word tv that's youtube the real word tv and we're gonna be here again next week we got another special guest and we thank you for watching thank you for supporting i'm jonathan you want to close out with a prayer yeah sure thank you okay cool let's pray father we thank you for the opportunity we had to come here lord to discuss certain topics and issues that are affecting us and those in our community that will not stop that conversation, that it will not stop in discussion, that it can now be become more than theory, that it can be put into practice and application, that solutions can be met, Father, that people will see you first, Lord, as we meet their needs and as by reflecting the character of Christ that we are attracted to you. Uh, we pray that you will continue to bless this show uh, and that they'll continue to grow uh, for your glory and that this ministry will go far beyond what they can even imagine. We thank you for all that you've done for us. In the name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, everybody.
Thank you for watching. We see you next week. Ah, 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 ah. Good night, everybody. Love you.